I am so excited today because I am doing a Pinkster program at Van Cortlandt House Museum. And so this is in my capacity as the New York Historical Society's Living History Coordinator. And we're doing it in collaboration with Van Cortlandt Park Alliance, uh, Van Cortlandt House Museum, and the National Society of Colonial Dames in the state of New York. I'm so excited about this program. Oh, so I am going to be introducing uh, the enslaved population, both the free black and enslaved population in New York um, within the slave quarters at the Van Cortlandt House Museum. So that's the very top, the attic. I'm just so excited about Pinkster because it really highlights um, the culture and humanity of Black folks in, um, in New York and New Jersey. I'm just really excited about this program. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, slavery in New York was still slavery. It was still chattel slavery. It wasn't a kinder, gentler. Um, the difference, though, was the difference in uh, groupings of enslaved persons. New York City had the largest slave owning populations, which mean about meant about half of the households in New York by mid uh, 18th century owned slaves. And um, so these enslaved persons were probably living in one or two enslaved persons per household. Whereas in the South, there was a very small population of people who owned enslaved persons and they owned a lot of people. Whereas up in New York, some middle class, a lot of middle class people had at least one. People who had small, small farms, generally speaking, you saw them having at least one or two enslaved persons. So um, it was, the Van Cortlands actually were um, an outlier because they had um, more than two. I, I think at the time by um, the 1740s, uh, they enslaved around 12 people. I'm saying this because it really explains why Pinkster was so important. This was a time where they had a chunk of time off to go see family members and friends or just black people in general who they would not have regularly seen because they were so isolated from one another. And through this, they were able to resist the erasure of their culture. Anywho, I am going to be vlogging today, um, as you all can see. Um, I just woke up. I had my blueberry strawberry oatmeal smoothie. I'm slightly still a little hungry, so I may have a bo boiled egg. We'll see. <sighs> and y'all know I really hate changing into historical garb outside of my home or wherever I'm traveling, my hotel room. Uh, so I am going to leave out of here in historical garb. Afterwards, I'm excited because I'm going to go bug my parents, Mama and Papa McKnight in Harlem. So if I make it, I'm going up to the Bronx. So I, there's no way I'm passing through Harlem and not seeing my my parents. So I'll have I'll have dinner with them this evening. So this is going to be a long day. I'm so excited about this program. Um, oh, just to let you all know, uh, if you missed today's program, we will have two more. There's going to be one on the 12th, so next Wednesday, and then, um, or I would say this coming Wednesday, and then the another one on the 19th, the next Wednesday. I think because I'm talking about uh, specifically the enslaved community, um, I think it'd be interesting to go with Negro cloth. So this is Osnaberg petticoat. So I'm going to wear this one and I'm either, it's in that time of year where it's like in between, where you're in between um, temperatures and I don't really know how to, how to dress. Um, so I think I'm going to wear this, my linen, but I do have a wool bed gown. I may take that just in case, just in case.
something I usually have prepped and ready to go before I leave in the morning for a program where I'm gonna be walking up and down three flights of stairs all day. I usually prep my foot bath. I have some Epsom salt there as well. So this will be waiting for me to fill when I get back home. way to Bering in Cortland House Museum. It's so beautiful here. It's so freaking beautiful. As you're walking up, it's really hard to believe that this field that I'm looking at is a place where enslaved persons worked. Uh, like this was a plantation right here in the Bronx, in Bronx, New York. And that is Van Cortland House. It is so funny when people are looking at me crazy. I'm like looking at them like, why are you looking at me like this? And then I remember I'm wearing historical garb. That's why they looking at me crazy. So we have John here who is helping us out today. Of space for one person, especially by New York City standards. But 
once you add two people, three people, maybe four people in this space, it gets a very tight in here. Thank you so much for joining me on my adventure today. I'm at my parents' apartment, so we just had dinner, and I'm going to go ahead and head home. Um, about Wednesday's program, um, I'm going to put a link down below if you want to join us. We're going to talk about food and travel to Pinkster and food that would have been eaten on the way. I'm so excited. We're joined by Lovada Nahon. Please join us for our digital Zoom program. I, I just feel so blessed to be able to do this work. I just feel blessed that I spent the day with the ancestors supporting um, my community as well as um, uplifting the voices of my ancestors. So the, every day I can do this, I'm so happy. So I picked up a bomb, a bath bomb from Lush and I'm probably going to take a butter knife to it and sprinkle some of it into my uh, foot bath. So I'm so excited about that. I'm a bit tired, but I'll, I'll make it through. Uh, give me a like and a subscribe and I'll see y'all later.